morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church, and thank you for joining us online. I'm going to start with a, a couple of announcements. Pastor Olson and Diane are quarantining until this afternoon, so we will have uh, Pastor Krista again joining us uh, to help us with our service, and another thank you to her for helping us. Uh, a couple announcements, Pastor Steve's office hours will be changing from Sunday to Monday to Saturday and Sunday. Um, he is here on a part-time basis, but as he indicates, he is here 24-7 for the congregation and for any emergencies. The phone number is listed in your bulletin, his email is listed in your bulletin, and even when he is off, he does want to be contacted for any emergencies you may have. Joe's office hours are usually on Monday, 9.30 to noon. There has been a transition committee formed. They will be meeting to talk about the goals of the church. Confirmation will be meeting on Wednesdays from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. As we worship you within these walls and pray throughout the week, keep our healthcare workers in your thoughts. There are local examples of those needing help, even non-COVID related, that are unable to get local help. No matter what side or what stance you take on everything that's going on, this is a common ground. God bless those in the medical field. Our confessions and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, whose claim, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promise prepared for us from the foundations of the world. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is All Hail, the Power of Jesus' Name, found on page 634 of your hymnal.
join me in the prayer of the day. O oh God, of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right, and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading for church. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. First reading comes from Ezekiel chapter 34. Thus says the Lord God, I myself search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places which they have been scattered on the day of the clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on the rich pasture of the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I myself I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, I will bind up the injured, I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with flank and shoulder and butted at the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between the sheep and the sheep. And I will set up over them one, one shepherd, my servant David. He shall feed them, he shall feed them, and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord God, will be their God. And my servant David will, shall be prince among them. The Lord God hath spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is Psalm, Psalm 95. Please read responsibly. <clears throat> Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy, the rock of our salvation. Let us come with our God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have mouthed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. A sacred reading today comes from Ephesians chapter 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not crease to give thanks for you as I have remembered you in my prayers. I pray that the Lord our God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and Father of glory, may give you spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what it is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? According to the working of his great power, God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. And above every name is the name. Not only is this age but also the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head over all thing, things for the church, 
which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open one of 
those presents. But in reality, they're labeled with the church here. And at the very, very top is the last box, which was actually taller than me, which that's saying something for a giant six one white middle-aged lady. So taller than me. And and it said Christ the King. So in reality, when I said good morning to you all, I should have said, Happy New Year! And you're all like, what? Well, thanks be to God that the church year somehow goes in a different year than others. Because today is actually the start and kickoff of the new year for the church. It's Christ the King Sunday. So one of the things we talked about with the children at Emmanuel was that, is it a good thing? Or do we kind of not understand why it is that the church calendar maybe runs on a different rhythm than the world's? Well, I'm not sure about you, but maybe this week or maybe this year, I'm pretty ecstatic that in 2020, it's good to know that the calendar is shifting already in the church. like, And that in regular calendars, so January, February, March, April, we're used to Christmas being the end of our calendar year. But in the church calendar, there's something beautiful about the fact that our year begins with advent and waiting and anticipation for the good news that God comes to us. God comes to you, God comes to me, no matter the situation. And maybe more than any other time, this year especially means a lot to me, that Jesus shows up in the flesh, in the north, and hey, and a dirty truck. God is unafraid of the muck and crud and hard things. And somehow for me this year, this week, that especially is some good news. So my hope is for the kids who are worshiping online or at home, that you can imagine what it is. So if you can imagine a tower stacked up to here with the crown on the top box. You all, we don't have as many young ones in the house, and I'm not going to pick on the men, so uh, I'll ask all of the children of God here. What do we usually put a crown on? What does a crown go on? Yeah. Someone's head. So imagine now a tower, you know, in stature that's right up here with the crown on it. We usually put a crown on the head, so what do you think our tower of boxes is inviting you to think of? It's a who rather than a what. Jesus, the King. And so I think it's pretty cool, and I want you kids to think about this, that in the church here, our calendar doesn't look like a group of pages, and the way we keep time isn't a watch or a clock and a phone. But the way we keep track of the rhythms and time and days is in the person of Jesus Christ, in his life, death, and resurrection, and what he calls us to do and be in love for him. So somehow for me, in this time, and in this, with all the transitions you kids are about to have with distance learning, it's really cool to me that our calendar looks like Jesus, and that's who we follow. We follow Jesus, not the day of the week or the time on the clock, but we follow Jesus. Amen. Well, I think Pastor Steve's title for his sermon was, Do You Know the Shepherd or Just the Word? That is not what I'm going to talk about. So you can just, if you're wondering what Pastor Bruce is talking about, and especially if folks are at home and have a copy of the Gospel Revolution, that is not the subject matter for this sermon. So what I'd love for you to think, I invited you to imagine the Gospel of the sheep and the goats. So we like to think of that parable as the parable of the sheep and the goats, or sometimes we talk about it as the parable of the least of these. So, where did you land when I invited you to think of who, how you would hear it? Did you hear mercy? Kindness, grace for you? Did you hear judgment, being condemned? When I read this gospel, I would love, love to put myself as the sheep. It sounds good to be a sheep, doesn't it? To think of all the things I've maybe done to help a neighbor. But then I realize the more I read this gospel, I'm not a sheep. I'm not sure where you put yourself. But I can actually come up with many, many times in my life when I have not lived out the mercy, 
that God asks us to live in this scripture. Times that I hear the words in my mouth, the things I think in my head, the stuff that I post or text, it doesn't have the mercy God calls me to have. How many times I've encountered another human and I have not sought to see Jesus in them. Instead, I've been quick to judge and it's been easy to do. So maybe you all saw yourselves as sheep. But I find myself to be a goat in this parable more and more than I see myself as a sheep. So what in the world do we make of this gospel? If you're the sheep and some of the last words of that parable are, and these will go away into eternal punishment, where is the good news for the goats? I had a student once who described this parable, inviting people to imagine that with this parable, you're given a gift of a pair of glasses. And the pair of glasses allows you, with each human you encounter, to see part of their story. So the person that cuts you off on the highway or speeds and kind of tailgates right behind you and passes you really quick, you think, man, well, Jesus is asking you to see Jesus in the person on the road. And so the pair of glasses would give you a little bit of a window into maybe why is this person writing up on my number? Why is this person speeding around me? Why? Now it doesn't necessarily mean that writing up on people's bumpers and speeding around them and breaking traffic laws is a thing, even though Trevor would tell you that sadly uh, Pastor Chris has struggled with the lead foot quite significantly. Um, but it gave a glimpse, the pair of glasses would give you a glimpse into that person. And so imagine what that would be like to have a pair of glasses that every human you encounter, you actually got to see a little more of their story. So you encounter someone who's frustrated and angry, and maybe you see them through your glasses that they're grieving something. So I love that image that a student had shared, this idea that in this gospel, we're given a pair of glasses. Because if there's one thing Jesus is saying, it's that we are to find God in every human on the planet, of every age, of every race, of every language, of every religion. We look to find God. We look to serve Jesus and the other person. Now, because that's a really, really big, big thing, it's why, as a sister in Christ, I confess before you today, probably eight times out of ten, I'm a goat. I'm a goat. And it breaks my heart when I realize that many, many times it is so much easier to judge or dismiss my neighbor or enemy than to actually do what God asked me to. According to this gospel, we are not judged according to our faith and how much faith we have. We are not judged according to our piety and how much we live out our life in the church or in our homes. We are not judged by our prayer life. We are not judged by our trust and faith in God according to this parable. We are judged by the mercy we show others. So what do you make of it then if you're the goat? So I've clearly identified I'm a goat more than I'm a sheep. Not sure about everybody else. I will not make you confess that by raising your hand before your brothers and sisters in Christ. You can internally see where you find yourself. And if anyone is sometimes like the goats, we really know we're a goat when we're trying to justify why we're a sheep. Right? You hear the goats trying to justify it. Well, when did we, when did we? Well, when I'm trying to justify myself, I'm pretty sure right away I'm a goat. So on Wednesday in confirmation, uh, which Keith, bless his heart, is one of our guides for confirmation, and we got to have our last kind of night in person of confirmation between Bethlehem and Daniel and the United Methodist Churches um, in Atwater and Rosendale. And we kind of had to have a special night because we knew that we were going to distance for confirmation uh, with following the school district and things. So we're going to go to distance for the month of December. 
And we had to have a special night, but when we actually got into small groups, my small group kind of got debating something. And they were talking about the drama of life in eighth and ninth grade. And some of the drama with their sports teams and all of the things. And somehow, I don't even remember how it got to this, but one of the young women said, well, I'm certainly not going to help. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they got piped up and listened a little more closely. And so part of it was they were talking about kind of some of the judging that goes on between the students with, the, with each other. And at a certain point, they were trying to kind of, volleyball was a big deal. Like all the politics of volleyball was a big part of the conversation. And the one student had said that. And what I loved was that she knew that no matter what someone told her, being loved by God was where her identity was. So then the small group got to talking, and based on the student's comment about not going to hell, we decided actually in God's heart, in the heart of the living God and creator of the world, God's longing is that hell is empty. God's heart is that hell would be empty. So what do you make then of this parable? Where Jesus clearly is splitting, or not Jesus, but the parable shows this king splitting folks. And I'm not sure about you, but I think according to this parable, there'd be a whole lot more of us going into eternal punishment and to the place of the devil and his angels, according to this parable. Well, it helps, first of all, that it's a parable. It's not an allegory. Jesus isn't saying, Jesus isn't saying, I'm a king, but you're the sheep and the goats. But he invites us to imagine that world. And what gives me phenomenal comfort on this Christ the King Sunday as we go into a new year as a church is that the very one who tells us this parable that convicts the majority of us that we are a goat, within a day and a half, the one who said the parable will go to the cross to die for the goats. Jesus gives a parable where when we're invited to imagine how we show mercy to our neighbor, some days we succeed. But a lot of days we don't. And I know we had one person over at Emmanuel that thought, I have hours of the day on a sheep and hours of the day on a goat. And it depended on which time of day the person did better as a sheep or a goat. But the one who says this parable then will die for the goats. For those of us that fail at showing mercy. Does it mean then we just do whatever we want? I think on Christ the King Sunday we learn no. Because the king will go to the cross even for the goats, even for those of us who do not see Jesus in the least of these. It means that we then get to look at all of the people with new eyes and put on those glasses from this scripture. But let us see Christ in our neighbor. Martin Luther used to describe it as being little Christs. Our calling as children of God is to be little Christs. You know, somehow for me, I kind of imagine like the little love of fingers, and somehow that's kind of a goofy image for me. So, you know, imagine that love of fingers like little Christ. But I had a professor, uh, Raleigh Martinson, who used a different language for little Christ. And Professor and Pastor Raleigh Martinson said, we are called to be Jesus with skin on. Jesus with skin on for our neighbors. And I think the most important thing in this gospel is it invites us to realize that whoever we encounter, also a part of them is Jesus with skin on. And so how then do we leave here and live according to the mercy that this gospel calls us to? Now before I close, one of the other things we talked about at Emmanuel this morning was all of the crud of the world around us. And so I'm not sure if you were paying attention to what you were saying in the song, but you just said, come let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving. I'm not 
not sure about you, but somehow for me, leading into this week ahead, when I normally on Tuesday would be loading up my car to drive till about one in the morning to Chicago to have Thanksgiving with family members from seven different states, and we pack 36 of us into my cousin's house in Chicago, I would love to say this Christ the King Sunday, I'm only exuberant about the King. But there's a lot of grief, I think, for many of us. And so, what do we make of the scripture that over and over tells us? Be joyful always, in everything, give thanks. In all circumstances, give thanks. Well, I know our different churches aren't partnering this year for a Thanksgiving Eve service. So I was thinking about this in the last week because I had a bunch of conversations in the last week with a whole bunch of different people. Some folks who are grieving the death of loved ones they need to be with. High school and college students that are feeling like sports seasons either just got cut short or didn't get to start. Um, and seniors who are feeling like they don't know if they're going to go back and get to do all the things um, for high school. And then you also, I also had conversations with medical workers from our church who are just so stressed. There isn't even a language for the stress that I'm in right now. Not to mention teachers and parents and kids that are juggling the wild world these days. I had some other conversations with business owners and folks that are so financially just unsure. And so in the midst of that, there were two other conversations I had this week. One with a family where we have a beloved member of Emmanuel who's dying right now from COVID. And her family can't be with her. And then the other was a conversation with one of our parishioners who needed emergency surgery and almost nearly didn't get it. She doesn't have COVID, but because of COVID, the hospital in Rice was full. Meeker was full. St. Cloud was full. And so many doctors and nurses were sick in Rice, they didn't know if they could assemble a surgery team for her. Thanks be to God, they were able to do that, and her recovery was in the ER because they had no ICU bed. But in all of these conversations, meaningful conversations with people struggling with the world today, I can't just stand here and say, be joyful always, happy Thanksgiving, everybody, in a few days. Because I think there's this level where we're adjusting to a different world right now. And we're mad about it, or we're sad about it. Or we're trying our best to still be positive, or maybe, if you're like me, you watch a heck of a lot more Christmas Hallmark Channel stuff right now. Thanks be to God, it starts at Halloween this year. <laughs> so what do we make of this be thankful in all circumstances stuff that God says? Well, I'm not sure about you, but for me, in heading into a new church year, the fact that we're about to prepare for this new year's of the God that comes in the flesh, in the manure and muck and crud and saliva-filled trough where he lays for the first night, it's so helpful to realize I can give utter and complete thanks this Thanksgiving not because of maybe the situation, but because of the God that is with us in the situation. So I know you have many members here at Bethlehem who also are battling COVID, and thanks be to God, I think for many it's mild, and I praise the Lord for the members here and at Emmanuel that have mild cases. It's, I think it's thanks every time. But we're in a world where everybody is kind of struggling, and we're all grieving a little bit. And so maybe, just maybe, this gospel invites us to show extra mercy, extra compassion, extra grace. And then maybe we can do it because we have a living God that made the mountains, Mount Everest, the oceans, the sun and moon, and the living God of this world that says, I love you, you're mine, and I'm with you in it. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks. Maybe not for all the stuff going on around us, but we give you thanks for the reality that you, the living God of this world, you love us. You come and enter into the hard situations in all of our lives. And you promise that we're not alone and you're going to help us through it. 
With that knowledge, may we dare to show the kind of mercy that you call us to in the gospel today. Help us to be Jesus with skin on, and help us to see you in everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We invite you to join us in singing the hymn of the day, Crown Him with Many Crowns. No. Let's do one through three. One through three sound good? church, the world, and all in need. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, give us eyes to see you in our neighbor. We thank you for those times that we have been the least of these, when you have brought others to our door or to meet our need. Help us to live out your mercy and grace for family, friend, neighbor, stranger, and enemy alike. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Friends of peace, we pray for peace throughout our nation and our world. We pray especially for homes and families where things are not peaceful. We pray for help for individuals and families who need reconciliation. We pray for peace throughout the world and especially for military service men and women who serve throughout the world and for their families at this time while they are apart. 
We pray also for all of the peacekeepers, those who rush in when we would rush out. We pray for, we pray for firefighters, EMTs, police officers, emergency responders. And we also especially lift up all who work and serve in our medical community in these days when that task is even more draining and more significant. Be with all of them and help them to truly be peacekeepers, those who stand up for justice, and those who also show mercy in the midst of a tough calling. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray especially for war-torn areas of the world, and we ask, O oh God, that you would be with those who are caught in the middle of conflict. We pray especially, O oh God, that you, the Prince of Peace, would bring an end to war. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Healing God, we lift up all of those in need of your healing, those in need of work, shelter, warmth, those in need of sustenance in these days ahead, those in need of extra help with mental health challenges that are going on, especially in these tough days. We also pray for those in need of reconciled relationships. But most significantly, we lift up now in our hearts and silently before you, those that need your physical healing. We lift them to you before in our hearts now. Bring your healing, O oh God. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In a season where we shift into a time of holidays, where we are invited in this next week to give thanks, we ask, O oh God, that you would give us hearts that can be grateful for you, and where we can seek to find the blessings in our midst, even in the midst of hard things going on around us. We especially think of those who are grieving, either recently or those who still are missing loved ones from the table from years past. May the hope and comfort of the resurrection give them strength this day and always. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Take a moment to uh, either on the comment section or in person here wave a greeting or smile with your eyes. You know, can give a good smile with your eyes as you share your peace uh, with your neighbors and especially God's peace with those who are worshiping with us from home today. For our offering for today, uh, we have a basket in the back and invite people to give um, of their offerings there. I know one of the things we talk about a lot at Emmanuel, and this is the same, same is true here at Bethlehem. It's amazing when our gifts and skills get pulled together, where we get to do more together than we can apart. And the same is true with our financial resources. My wallet goes a lot further when combined with all of yours. And it's an amazing thing then to see that whatever we put in the offering plate, when we put it all together, we can do a lot, and a lot more than we can just do on our own, the beauty of the church. So with our offerings in mind, and especially for those worshiping online, there are ways to give through the mail. And do you guys have electronic giving options? PayPal. PayPal. So there are PayPal options as well. So you can check that out or uh, call the church office with questions about that. So with all of our offerings in mind, the way to give our time, talents, and possessions, I uh, invite you to join me in our offertory prayer. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you. Gather around your table and share your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance, and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self, and care for all that you have made, through Jesus Christ, our sovereign servant. Amen. Our communion hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs and angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. God bless. Have a great day.